Here we are building a giant food dryer. The Saskatoons are getting ripe. Almost everything is scrounged, except for about $100 worth of screen and hardware cloth that I had to buy because I just couldn't find enough. This piece of plywood I not over on the highway. So everything's made to fit. I'm using the overlap butt joint on the corners to keep everything at one level and uh, minimize holes for the flies to get in. So this is the bottom part of it. And uh, for structural strength and uprights, I'm using some old tent poles that are actually adjustable. Build holes in the corners to put the pipes in. This was an old pallet from some machinery I picked up at a tire shop. And here's installing the legs and then putting some screws through the side of the hole to keep them from falling out and remove it. And the steel legs are going to allow me to put tangle foot on steel poles to keep the ants from crawling up and stealing my hard earned fried food. Bird cloth to keep the squirrels and chipmunks and flies out. Hopefully, hopefully the bears don't decide to rip it to shreds. I even put silicone uh, on the harbor cloth to keep the flies from getting in. On the inside, we're having to sew a piece of hardware cloth together because I didn't have pieces big enough. Drilling it to fit. This is the key to the whole thing. It's our underground stove. We we'll dig a dig a hole. And this is fitting a piece of chimney to a small barrel. That's going to be the main guts of the stove. I found experience that the first thing that burns out is for the exit to the heat into the stove pipe. So I'm giving a double layer insulated fitting on there to hopefully lengthen the light life of it. I've probably built 20 different food dryers in my lifetime so far. They're all different kinds. This is my air intake. It's a fairly small pipe because I don't want it to burn too fast. It's a little piece of channel iron from an old forge to uh, spread the air out and keep it from getting plugged. Throwing a few bricks in the bottom of it to hold it up. And we're mixing up local clay to surround the stove. I could have just put sand in there, which would have been a whole lot easier, but I'm figuring the stove is going to burn out. And hopefully the clay is going to keep it from burning out, or if the steel does burn away, that I still have some structural strength left in the clay. You add about 30% sand to the clay, which helps it to not crack. Now we'll fill up the hole all around the stove. Experience with the, our other underground stove, I find that the dirt actually turns to stone after a certain length of time that you cannot. Uh, dig it with a shovel, you have to 
Use your chisel or what if you want to dig it a little bit deeper or something like that. So here's the first segment of stove pipes. The second one. And here I have to make a stove pipe a little bit bigger. You'd think six inch stove pipe would be a six inch stove pipe, but it's not. It varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. I'm just stretching it to make it fit a little bit better. Put an elbow on it. Going upright. And pound on the pipe in to support the stove pipe so it doesn't blow over. Tie it up with a piece of wire. This is how we move the stove with some ropes underneath the whole thing, one of us on each side of it. Put Reflectex on the inside and then put shelf supports on each side. This is making the the door out of screens and I'm from experience I know that tightening the screens up will warp the size of it so I'm putting the stabilizers in the to keep the side from bending when I tighten the screen up. This is running the spine into the holes I put a little bit on each side to hold it in place and take them out while I'm finished putting the whole spine in. And the tighter you get it, the better. I always leave a little bit of screen on the edge so that if I have a problem, I can hold it and pull it tight and if you cut it too short. I have a real hard time repairing it. Putting some gussets in the corner because this door is going to get most of the abuse. So here's a big walk that is actually the lid of the the stove and I put a couple sheet metal rings around on the ground and I fill them with sand and actually the seal on the walk is just wiggle it into the sand and it works pretty good. Here's a first burn I can throw 16 by 16 whole blocks in there and they burn for 12 to 16 hours. And here's the cross braces and the for the shelves. I've got all different kinds of screens that I can use. I added some solar collectors on each side, which may get expanded so that it can just collect solar energy and heat. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have Check out our food drying videos for some of the hacks I've picked up over the years. Thank you.